Hey guys, it's me Dennis from Itchy Band Studio. Today I will show you how to sculpt a rope, a clog and a purity seal. For this tutorial I use magic sculpt, different spatula tools, a clay shaper, a brush. You need also 320 grit sandpaper, baking paper, a hobby knife and a tube tool. When the putty is mixed you take the baking paper and put the putty between it. Then you start rolling it to a flat piece of putty. The magic scope will not stick to the baking paper. In the last tutorial I showed you using baby powder and so I showed you a different method without baby powder if you have no powder around. This is the miniature we use. We will create a rope on top of his chest and something between his legs. On the back side I will scope the clock. Here we have the flat piece of putty and now I cut a small piece of it and start adding it to the miniature. You can see that the scorpion sticks to my tools, so keep your tools wet. I have always a bit of saliva of one of my fingers to ensure that the scorpion will not stick to my tool. In the beginning I will push the putty to the plastic of the miniature to ensure that it will stick really nice and tight on it. Then I start building up the basic shapes and volumes of the fabric I'm looking for until I have the right position and everything fits fine together. Don't go too far into detail in the beginning because maybe you will change something later and you will lose all the details you created since then and you just lose the time you spend on that. Also some guys of you asked me how, how long you can work with a magic scope. Basically you can work until, I mean basically you can work really good something between 40 and 50 minutes and then it will be hard and start drying. I mean you can still work there and create nice sharp edges but to manipulate it it's a bit too late and after two hours it is totally dry. You can speed up that pro drying process also if you put a miniature with a sculpey or the sculpey itself under a lamp that creates heat but don't put it too close to the lamp. If you heat it up too much some air bubbles will appear and you have to fix them once it is dry. Another question was also how I smooth and soft the magic scope. I use water or saliva because the water will solve the putty. I still pushing on the putty and taking off some excess. Now the upper part is prepared. I will leave it like that for a moment, give it time to dry and set so let's move to the next step. Now we cut a piece of putty that we use as the bottom section of the rope. Once I have cut the putty I start adding it to the miniature. Just bring it into the right place, pushing it, ensure that it sit tight to the plastic and leave it like that. Now the lower section of the rope can dry for a while and give it more stability and I can continue work on the top section. Cleaning some areas, giving more definition 
to the details, to the faults I try to create, pushing and dragging the putty until I have the the shape I'm looking for I have in my mind. You can see it. So this is the basic. Now I start working with the needle tool, just pushing very gently to the putty and try to create more details and more definition and also I try to give it a natural look. Yep. But remember you have to keep your tools always wet. I have always bit saliva on my finger and stitched the tool into it so it will not stick. Yeah, touch it very gently, be careful, don't destroy your details you have created since now. Now I'm using a loop tool. It's also very helpful to give your folds a bit more definition and a three-dimensional look. Just push it very, very soft and gently, bring them in the right position. Now I use the brush to soften up the edges and blending everything together. The brush will not destroy any detail I, I have created since now because it's very soft and I am using it for smoothing out the details, pushing sometimes a bit, but I will not destroy anything. It's just blending and softening everything together and give it an organic look. I will continue that process until I am fine with the look of the upper part of the rope and leave it dry for a while and continue work on the bottom section. Okay, let's move back to the lower part of the rope. I use a spatula tool, a small one, and just bringing everything in the right position, pushing and dragging. It's always like that. You push, push and drag a bit, bring it into the right position, into the right place, create, creating some basic volumes. Now I'm switching to the clay shaper. He's a nice tool. I, I love to work with this tool because he's he has a soft tip and it's not that. You will not create that sharp edges like a metal tool, but you can see when I'm pushing, you can see when I'm pushing to the magic sculpt, the top of the sculpting tool is bending and absorbing energy. So you can you can work really nice on fresh party with this tool, and it helps me to create also very natural folds and wrinkles and pushing and blending everything together. You can use them also for a blending. I do it also. I think later in the video I blend some stuff together with the clay shaper using again the brush to clean up some areas playing around with the details and give it more definition now it's dry enough and has enough stability that I can add a bit more of magic sculpt to the bottom and start creating the big folds you can see me pushing with my finger from the back side to the foundation so this ensures me that I will not push that foundation too far in the back and it will stay on the place where it is now and I can don't worry about the back side of the rope you will not see it later once we have added the clock so that doesn't matter important is that you give it enough stability that you can create your faults and bring it to the right place once you have done the detail work clean it clean it up maybe go back with the clay shaper if you see some mistakes or some imperfections you don't like and once it is dry we move to the next step
Now you can see the finished rope. Let's go ahead. The rope is dry. Now I use my hobby knife, cleaning up some areas. The magic spoke is really cool to work with an exacto blade and carving into the material because it's really stable, really strong once it is dry. It's it's like plastic, resin putty. Now I clean up the bottom of the rope and give it just a bit more movement and carving in some round round edges where the folds cover. Cleaning a bit the back side but it still it's not important, you will not see that area. Just at the bottom maybe where you can see it, but I am sure you will not see it once the miniature is glued on the base. Please take care when you use a hobby knife and don't cut yourself. I cut myself a couple times, so grab it, grab it close to the end of the knife. That gives you way more control over it when you're carving to it, so please take care. Now we take one ball of putty and start building up a foundation for the first layer of the clock. The reason why I add the foundation, that gives me more stability for the first layer of the clock. Because when you're pushing it, it will move and will be very fragile. So this ensures me that I have enough stability. Now we have done the foundation for the first layer. I take the backpack, check that I have enough space for it, yep, enough space, so taking again piece of putty, put it between the backing paper, roll it to a flat piece, then checking, yeah, okay, now again, cutting the putty into the form of the rope, no, sorry, not rope, the cloak, and holding to it, checking. Uh, I think it's a bit too short, so put it back to the paper, roll it again. No, maybe it's still too small. Okay, one more time. Here we go, that should fit. Double check. Yeah, this is the right size. So I start adding it again to the plastic, pushing it, Make sure that everything sticks on the plastic and on the foundation I create. In the beginning don't worry about how it looks. It's not that fancy, but in this step you create a layer where you can where you work on later and create every detail. Keep it simple, just keep it simple, sketch in some lines where you think the folds should go. If you have no idea how folds go, check out some reference, it's always good to have a reference if you have no idea. Also in the beginning you should use for sure some references, take some other miniatures or go on Google, check some pictures, 
or some concept drawings, concept art, whatever, you will find for sure a lot of reference material. Now you can see how I blend the foundation together with the first layer I, cre I create. Also I, I use my finger to give it more stability when I'm blending it together. So the first layer will not move around or maybe break, whatever. So it will take some time, but take your time to prepare the first layer. Don't care about the look. It will look cool when it's done. Here can you see me using the loop tool to blending the putty together and smooth it out a bit, just roughly, bring everything in the right position, into the right place. Using the needle, give him a bit more definition on top, on the top section where the clock is mounted to the shoulders. Checking with the backpack that I have enough, enough space for it later when it is glued on. And then I saw, no, there's there's a bit too much putty, so I take it off. Now I'm using the clay shaper and softening everything and blend it together. Okay, the first layer of the clock should dry now. Here we have more stability when we continue the work. And so I used the free time to show you guys how I how I sculpt uh, a purity seal. I just rolled some putty out and created a small band of putty that I cut into two pieces and add to the dry rope in front of the marine. This is a really easy technique, also good for beginners. You just you just add the band to the front on the belt where we have a, a seal, a wax seal we already have on the on the plastic miniature, but the old seal purity seals were were gone because of the, the rope. Keep it simple. Just add the first layer and then the second layer of the bands. I mean it's easy to create, pushing it, bringing it to the right position like I do on, on the rope and on the clock. I do. It's, it's always the same process when you build up the basic volumes.
I have done the, the basics, the basic volumes also. Now I take a, a banded needle tool to give it more definition, creating some more dynamic shadows that it looks more graphic. Just pushing it very gently, creating some movement because the clock, everything and the rope is moving from the wind that blows from one side. So, uh, also you will see there's a hood I sculpted on top of the miniature. So I had a big fail. When I was sculpting the hood, my camera was not working, I had a problem with my PC, so I will do another tutorial where I show you how to sculpt uh, the hood, but basically it's the same process how you make the, the rope and the clock, so it's not a big difference. So I'm not sure if I show it to you, you should write it down to the comment section if you want to see it, but basically it's the same technique. You can see now I'm using the clay shaper, pushing it very gently, creating also some folds. When I have done the bands, I saw, I thought it's a bit boring, you have the, the wax seal on his belt, so I decided to sculpt a small skull inside the wax. Really fun to make him, because he's really small, I mean you just poke in two holes with a needle and start pushing, pushing a bit around and then you have a skull. I mean, I hope you can see it on the camera because it's really really small yeah at least I want to show you what you can do So here you can see the finished purity seals and the skull I sculpted. So let's move to the next step. Now the basic layer of the clock is dry. So I take my exacto blade. So again, please be careful when you use that stuff, don't cut yourself. I use also a 300 grit sandpaper. Now I start carving into the magic scope and I try to create a, a wave pattern. The wave pattern will give me an indication where the fabric is, is moving, you know, where I have ups and downs or that show me where I have to add more clay to create a dynamic fold. Now I'm cleaning the putty on the front side, sanding it, smooth it out. Now I'm sanding the back side. see the waves I created. This is a guideline for me. I use it as a guideline that will help me build up my layers. I'm still carving. You see I'm holding the knife really tight and close where the knife is screwed into the tip. 
that gives me a lot of control and you can see how nice you can carve into the material and create really sharp lines and details. This is one reason why I like to work with the magic sculpt. I came from traditional sculpting and when you work with clay you I mean you add clay to the sculpture but also you're carving and I, I like that carving process. Now everything is prepared, take a piece of clay, make a roll, you can see I use a round spatula tool. This is really helpful to blend the folds together. Now you can see where I place the roll of putty and it will end up at the highest point of the waves I created. So this is why I made them and it helps me a lot to see where that should go. Also I want to say, I mean there are for sure a lot of different ways to create or to sculpt clocks. Some may easier, faster than mine. So this is not the only way you can do it. But in this video I would like to show you how I do it, how I like to do it. And maybe you can use this as an inspiration for your own miniatures, for your own clocks and stuff you're sculpting and I at least I hope you will learn something from me it motivates you to start sculpting if you never sculpted something but don't be disappointed if it is not working on the first time you have to practice sculpting it's all about patience and practicing
now I'm using the brush to clean up the surface of the putty and smooth it. It will give the putty a more natural look, more organic. The brush is very soft, you will not destroy any detail you created with the metal tools, but it will look more natural and you can clean up some areas and soft them out. Here we go. The clock is dry now. Now I go back and clean some areas, maybe on the shoulder pad where I have some excess or maybe tiny, tiny taste too much sculpey. Carve it out. And I will use now some sandpaper after I have done the the carving process. And give it the final touch, you know, and just go over with the sandpaper and clean it up just a bit and here we go guys. The finished clock, everything is done now, the rope, the purity seal, the hood. If you liked the video, then please leave a comment or subscribe to our channel. That was Dennis from Ichiban Studio. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Bye bye.